All right, welcome back to Master's Fair Video Tutorials and um, please, in case you haven't subscribed, go back and what? Subscribe. Because when you subscribe, it helps a lot. Anytime you drop a video, you'll be able to get the updates. Let's look at this question. Beautiful. SSE 2004, question one. The table below shows the operation delta on the set. And the set given here is A, B, C, D. And there is a table there. There is a nice table here. All right. Very good. Make sure you study the table very well. We are going to do a lot of investigations on it. Now, use it to answer the following. A. State the identity element. Here you have to state the identity element. B. You have to find the inverse of the element A and B. C. State whether or not the operation is commutative. State whether or not the operation is commutative. Nice. Now, let's go straight to the point. Study the table carefully. We are going to investigate a lot on it. So let's look at stating the identity element. In fact, even if the A part says you are to first find the inverse, if the B is to be at A and the A to be at and the A to be at B. All that I want to say is that without the identity element, you can never know the inverse. So if the option A is saying you have to find the inverse, and option B says you have to find the identity element, you can do the B phase before the A because without the identity element, you can't get the inverse. So let's go quick. A, then the B will come here. So the A is saying that we find the identity element. Identity element. And I'm not sure that we as another one as a student to find the inverse before the identity. I'm not sure. Alright. So now, what's the idea about the identity element? When a number Combined with an identity element, it will give you the same number. Because you know identity element can be one, and any, any number multiplied by one is still the same number. That's what it means. Or this operation style can be addition, it can be multiplication, it can be subtraction. Now we understand. Very good. So if I'm talking at if I'm using if I'm using the identity element to be one, it means I'm referring to multiplication because when you multiply any number by one you get the same number and if you add any number to zero you get the same number so that is the identity element so the question is saying that we are to state the identity element from the question and see it's just simple okay this is the technique we use to find the identity element Check the set in the question. I was saying this in the previous video. Check the set in the question. The order of the set, the order, I mean the order of arrangement is A, B, C, D. Now come back to the table. Check the rows and the column where you can find the same arrangement A, B, C, D. And that is where the identity element will be. So let's look at this. B, A is not part. See, this and this, they are not part. We are focusing on this part. This part. So, this and this, they are the, that's not the focus. So, now let's go A, B, C, D. A, B, C, D. No, it's not that. A, B, no. Oh, A, B, C, D. Wow. You can see this B, A, A. It's not part. So, since A, B, C, D is in the order of arrangement of the set given you, then this C, this C here, 
is what is going to refer to you as the identity element. So here the identity element you have to state is C. How do we know that? This is a subjective, so you need to prove or you need to get something to stand on it to say that this is the identity element. So now that you know that everything is here, now that you know that everything is here, this is what you're going to do. Now you're going to pick the number, combine it by the identity element and see what you get. Is that correct? So let's go like this. Since the number is first, I'm writing the number first before the data limit. Now I know that this C, this E, this E is the data element. So let's go. A star, A star C. Then B star C. Then C star C. Then D star C. Alright? Very good. Let's look at the results. A star C. A star C is A. B. Oh, we are not using star here. We are using delta. Sorry for that. We are applying delta, not, not star. I like using star. Ah, what is wrong with me? Oh, this year is going to be B my year of stars. Let's move on. B star C. So B star C will be B. Oh, you are following. C star C will be C. D star C will be D. So you see, this is truly an identity element. Why is this an identity element? Because when it combine with any number, you get the same number. Combine with any number, you get the same number. Combine with any number, you get the same number. Combine with any number, you get the same number. Get the same number. Therefore, E is equal to C is an identity element. So I, I didn't see that. That's that. that. Alright. Now that you know the identity elements, then the inverse will be simple for you because we know that for the inverse, when any number combined by its inverse, you get an identity element. This is not something that we choose. It's a, like it's a reality. It's a reality. We go know that this a raised to power negative one is like a times one over a. Pa, 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 one. one is an identity element. That's what this is. Any number combined by uh, its inverse, you get an identity element. Even s times it's still one. This time is still one. All right. Now let's look at it. So now we are going to look for the inverse. The inverse. So here, this is how it's going to help us a lot than the previous one. The previous table. This table is going to help us a lot. So focus. Watch. Now the identity element. You know that identity element is C. So go back to the question. Identify where the C is. So watch. You can see that C is here. C is here. C is here. C is here. So C is here. C is here. C is here. C is here. And these are the identity elements. Okay? The C is identity elements. So now watch. <laughs> I'm going to show you. Now let's see. A delta B will give you C. A, well, what am I using star? A delta, D A delta, A delta B will give you C. That's an identity element. A, oh. this is A delta B. Okay, okay. And this is B delta A. B delta A. B delta A will give you C. C delta C. C delta C 
will give you C. How will I say? D delta D will give you C. D delta D will give you C. Done. What is this? What is this telling you? This is telling you that the index of A is B because when it combines, it gives you the identity element. The index of B is A because when it combines, it gives you the identity element. The inverse of C is C because when it combines, it gives you the identity element. The inverse of D is D. So everything here, everything here is going to represent as the inverse. So the inverse of A is B, the inverse of B is A, yeah, like that. And that is all. But you are done. And you are going to get your marks. So you cannot conclude that. The inverse of A is C. The inverse of B, uh, sorry, the inverse of B is A like that. Mm -hmm. In some of the objectives, they can um, specify or they can ask you of finding the inverse of B and D only, and that is going to be A and D. Next question. State whether or not the operation is commutative. State whether or not the operation is commutative. Like we did in the previous video. Pick any number and swap it and see if it's going to give you the same thing. So that's it. So let's pick A delta B and B delta A. A delta B, A delta B, C. B delta A, C. Okay, let's pick C delta A and A delta C. C delta A, C delta, C delta A is A. And A delta C is A. How? Oh. You still don't have enough evidence to conclude. Let's add one more. Um, let's bring D. So let's pick, let's say, A and D. Or B and D. Let's pick B and D. B delta D and D delta B. B delta D. B delta D is A. D delta B is A. Wow, wow, wow. Now, you can now conclude that the operation delta is commutative since then you bring this one so you can write the operation delta is commutative since then you write this one it means you are done is that clear all right you can also you can also um, bring this one first and write it down due to these reasons the operation delta is commutative. All right. Thank you. I think that's all for that. And you see, um, since associativity deal with two operation sign, and the table is dealing with only one sign, uh, there is no way that we they can ask you to check whether it's associative or not. So that one will not be applied here. Thank you. See you in the next video. Bye bye.